Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm actually going to be transferring my screen over to Rick so that you guys can take a look at what he's going to do on his computer. And he'll be talking a little bit about some of his favorite photos of the year, some things about his photo techniques and his post-processing techniques. So let me go ahead and transfer that over to him. All right, you're good. I look looks like I'm here. Hi, everybody. I'm glad to be here today. Um, Liz asked me to join in with her and unfortunately Dan, who's out sick today, um, to talk a little bit about some of my images from the past year that, that I really liked. Um, and this has been a, a rather transformative year for my photography. Um, I've been a long time Canon shooter. Um, and, you know, 5D, 5D Mark II, Mark III. Um, I have lots of Canon lenses. Um, been shooting for years with Canon. Uh, but one of the things the last couple of years that really got me was that the uh, you know the weight of all this stuff, uh, carrying it around, um, and I miss the old days when I had a small rangefinder camera, um, and I was at Photo Plus in New York uh, in the fall of 2012, no, 2012 last year, Liz. Yeah. I think so, 2012. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, I walked by the Sony booth, and Sony had this small full-frame rangefinder camera called the RX1. And I played with it for a while there, and it was I, I, it was like if I could have bought it right then on the show floor, I would have done it. Mm -hmm. um, I had actually played a little bit with, I, I bought a D800 for a while and played with that to see if maybe I wanted to shoot with Nikon, decided that wasn't really what I wanted to do. Um, and the RX1 is a small, I've actually got a, um, it's a small range finder with a, 35 millimeter Zeiss lens on it, um, an F2, and it is uh, compact, light, um, and uh, as I said, it's full frame. Um, it's expensive. Uh, it was not, I didn't buy it, uh, or I thought long and hard about how much um, I was going to spend on it, um, but in the end, I sold a couple of lenses and got the camera in December, and it has been in my pocket or my backpack ever since. Um, it was just a, a revelation to me. It really did kind of bring me back to my father's uh, old Agfa rangefinder that he gave me when I was in high school um, that sort of went everywhere with me. Um, I, had, you know, I had like a F2.8 50 millimeter lens on it. Um, and the, the, the sensor in the, in the RX-1 is wonderful. The, the lens is unbelievable. Um, and so like I said, I just started playing with it. Um, it. It really went with me everywhere. And as I look through my images over the past nine months, um, and I look at the ones in my catalog that are flagged as, as you know, starred images or selects, um, it just amazes me how many of them were shot with the RX-1. I mean, I still occasionally shoot with the, the Canon stuff, um, but it's, uh, it, it, it's a pretty amazing little camera. Um, so let me, I'll, I'll show you a couple of stuff, that, a couple of the things that I've done with it in the past year. Whoops, sorry. Um, you know, so we did our kitchen last year and uh, it's quite beautiful and um, one of the things that I shot with it was uh, when the tulips came in in early February. Um, just set up the tripod in the kitchen um, using the lights. Uh, Matt Kleskowski told me I should have be, I should have uh, gone through and gotten rid of all these little uh, hot spots up there. That that would have made the image better. But um, oh please. This, <laughs> I know. I oh know. please. Uh, I don't do I don't do a lot of uh, post processing on my images. I don't do a, other than dust spots and every once in a while I might remove um, something that's really obnoxious, but uh, you know, most of the time it's like I try very hard to, when I look through the viewfinder, get exactly what I want. Um, and this image was uh, actually, it has been post-processed um, in Suite 8 in tonal contrast, or yeah, tonal con dynamic contrast. Um, but I originally processed it in uh, Perfect Effects 4 with the uh, local contrast slider, just to sort of bring out some of the, some of the detail and uh, punched up the saturation a little bit. I, I do tend to work on um, on my images, adding a little bit of vibrance and saturation. Um, but and and I'm also a big fan of the glow. You know, I'm um, I was the person who argued that charge more money glow needed to be back in the product from Photo Tools. That was that was my go-to uh, <laughs> effect for the longest time. I would apply it and then put it at 50%. Uh, 
So, but anyway, so so the RX one, like I said, I mean, it really it's small enough that I was literally putting it in my pocket. Um, and uh, I remember it was in, I believe it was in late January, early February. I was uh, walking downtown, uh, or I was taking the, the train downtown in Portland to see a lecture, and I had the RX one in my pocket. And uh, I stopped at this um, train station. Um, the place I was going was right down the street, and I just saw this guy on the side there reading the paper. And I pulled out the RX-1, and I shot, you know, 10 images with it. And I really didn't think much about it. Um, I, uh, I don't remember what the ISO, 4000, um, shot at 2.8. Um, but when I got home that night, and I was looking at the images that I shot, there was something in this one that I really liked. Um, and I, I really didn't do much post-processing to this at all. I did some noise reduction in Lightroom. Uh, not a lot. Um, I did a little bit of sharpening in uh, the suite, but it, it, it really was kind of just okay. Um, and the next day was Saturday, and I uploaded this image to Flickr, which is sort of where I am. I'm big buckaroo, all one word on Flickr, if you <laughs> want to see. Um, and, you know, I, I really didn't think too much of this image. I was actually posting it more as sort of a, hey, this is a night shot with the RX-1. I was still kind of in love with the camera and, you know, testing it out in different situations and scenarios and stuff like that. And um, I posted it, and that was it. And so that was Saturday morning, and I went to bed Saturday night, and uh, I had left my phone. I didn't put my phone in do not disturb mode. And in the middle of the night, my phone starts dinging. And it like wakes me up, and I get up and I look, and and it's the Flickr app on my phone that's basically telling me that this image has been favorited, 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 you know. And so, I, it like two o'clock in the morning, I like go online, and it turns out that it had made Explore that day on Flickr, which is sort of their picks of the day thing. Um, and this image, in the space of I think about two days, became my number one ranked image on Flickr, which was surprising to me. But you know, again, as I look at it now, um, you know, it's it's composed well. The it's a nice shot. I mean, the the guy over here. I mean, it's just so sharp. You know, you can really see what's going on in this in this image. Um, so so anyway, like I said, this one I really didn't do too much post processing on at all. Um, the, this is you're actually looking at the original raw image. Um, so, um, but anyway. Uh, so I, I kept the camera, like I said, in my pocket. And in February, um, February is uh, the Portland International Film Festival month. And this is something Liz and I actually, uh, we go to every year. Um, it's like the is... best thing about living in Portland is the Portland International Film Festival. We go, ev we've gone every year since what? I was 15. Yep. So. And actually this year, we, we this year, next year's we have passes because we just decided we're going to take the time off and go to the movies the whole time that the, the festival's here. All day, anyway, every day. <laughs> yep. Um, but anyway, uh, so again, I had the RX-1 in my pocket um, when we were waiting outside the museum one night for these for the the movies, and um, we were the the sky overhead was just filled with crows. I mean, it was just crazy how loud they were, and they were flying all over the place and and everything. And you know, again, I had a camera in my pocket, so I pulled out the RX-1 and I I. Uh, you know, took a bunch of shots, and then we went into the movie, and I got home, and I put this image up, and this is actually one of my favorite images of this year, um, I, I, and I think some of it is because of where I was and how happy I was being at the film festival, and, you know, we had seen a bunch of really good movies, um, but it, it just, it like, I, I just somehow got this captured at the right time. Again, um, you know, F4, ISO 160, 80th of a second, I mean, it's just kind of, I, I, I really like this image. Um, and when I got home, I, I brought it into the suite, so this was perfect effects at the time, and um, this here is, it's mostly uh, the color enhancer and the charge more money glow, um, which I backed off quite a bit. Um, you know, brought the blue out. I, I don't know if you remember, Liz, but, but the sky was really, even though it was getting late, it was, the sky was just this crazy blue, and it was I love the... It was blue. Yeah, and, and I love the, the, the sort of, the way the, the, the little edges of the building look like piano, you know, keys, and, um, 
you know, like I said, this this was an image, and this one didn't do as well on Flickr as, as the the Old Town Chinatown image, but still, like I said, this is one of my favorite prints of the year. I love the you know the detail that I was able to get with this camera down here and the shadows, and um, you know, and I just love these birds. They, I, it, it was just such a great moment, and I've been back a bunch of times in the last six months to see movies, and I've never seen the birds again. Um, but again, you know, it's like it's this. Uh, this serendipity, you know, it's like having a camera with you all the time. And I know, you know, we talk about phones and stuff like that, but, you know, to me, there's there's nothing like a, a, a full frame camera, you know, just capturing all of that that those, that image on on a sensor, and you know, giving you the opportunity to sort of work with it and stuff. So, uh, but so anyway, so that 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 was another one that just sort of okay, I'm out shooting and you know, or out walking, and I have a camera with me. Um, another thing that 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 I I love in Portland is the Columbia River. Um, I joke that this is kind of my muse, um, <laughs> but I spend a lot of time going up and down the Columbia. I have a motorcycle, um, you know, and I've got a, a, a big camera bag with all my Canon gear in it, and I've got a couple of friends we drive around and uh, you know have we have a lot of fun. Um, and this shot is at one of our favorite places on the Washington side of the Columbia River. It's called Cape Horn. Um, and uh, I was out with my buddy Duncan Davidson um, one day in horrible weather. And we just decided that we were going to go drive out to Hood River. And so we got in the car and we drive up by Cape Horn and we get out and we um, we get our stuff. And that day I had both the RX-1 with me and I also had, you know, my, my Canon stuff and the tripods and I set everything up and, you know, I took all of these shots with my, my, uh, I had the 6D at the time. Um, and, you know, I got back and I looked at this image and, you know, it was okay. I mean, it, you know, I, I like the green and, you know, I was kind of thinking what to do to post-process it. And, um, you know, so I, I went in and, and this is probably my most processed image of the, the ones that I'll show you here today. I did a lot of work on this. As you can see, I straightened it a little bit. <laughs> um, I added a fair amount of contrast, saturation. Um, I did a little bit of local editing up in the, the skies to sort of bring out the darkness because this was a really dark day. Um, but the thing that's funny about this image to me is, so we were up on this overlook for about 15 minutes. And I would say that 95% of the images I shot were with the 6D and two lenses. Uh, I think I shot with a 16 to 35 and a 70 to 200. Um, this shot was shot with the RX-1. I literally pulled the camera out of my pocket, framed it. I took five shots. This was the one that I did. And, and I thought, to, I meant today to sort of pull out all of them, but you don't need to see them all. This really was the best shot of the day. Um, and this was a funny one. I, I, I about a week before, I took another shot of the Columbia River coming down from Hood River. Um, I was there with my wife, and um, I got up early one morning, took this shot that I thought was just beautiful, um, and posted it on Flickr. Nothing happened. Uh, you know, people, some people liked it, but it didn't get lots of hits, um, and which puzzled me. And then I go and I post this image on Flickr, and this image then became my top viewed image on Flickr. And I've, I've gone back and forth. I don't quite understand this other image to me is more peaceful than this one. Uh, maybe it's just the, the, the leading lines up to the rock in the back. Maybe it's the, the, the color, the green. Um, but it's just funny how, how sometimes I will think an image is, you know, not great, but good. You know, that I've, that I've made a, a really good image and find that other people look at it and go, no, I actually like this one um, better. You know, it's, it's, it's a funny, funny thing to me. Um, but anyway, so this was this was uh, the like I said that became sort of the next image on Flickr um, for me. Um, I shot a, a little bit over the summer, not a lot, and then I went um, to uh, San Francisco to visit a friend of mine uh, in September. And uh, uh, we, my friend, has two motorcycles, so we get to ride around San Francisco on motorcycles quite a bit. And we went up to uh, Ocean Beach, which is out on the, the beach in uh, uh, San Francisco. It's a really fun place to go. And we walked up to this place. Um, and again, you know, I'm riding a motorcycle. I, uh, he doesn't have saddlebags or anything like that, but I've got the RX-1 in my pocket. Um, so we get up to the top here at, at Ocean Beach, and I'm looking, and, and you know, something just sort of compelled me to, to take the shot. And 
you know, I love the light, the way the shadows were on the on the, the beach. I love the houses on the left. Um, I, I think that solitary guy walking on the, the beach over here. Um, you know, I'm looking at it and, and, and you know, I like it. I, I, I think it's a, a, a decent image. Um, I get back and we had just started working with the beta version of Suite 8 and um, we were looking for images to play with dynamic contrast. And so I'm like, all right, well, I'll take this one and I'll put it into the suite and um, ran dynamic contrast. And pretty much this was all I did to it was some dynamic contrast, a little bit of um, saturation pop. But uh, the funny thing about this is I look at this image and I go, you know, it's an okay image. And I put this on Flickr and this now is my number one image on Flickr. Um, <laughs> It's like, I think it's almost up to 10,000 views at this point. Um, and, I, and again, I look at it and I think it's good, but I don't know what makes it a better image than some of the other images that I've shown. I don't know why, you know, it's better than the, or at least more people, re it resonates with more people than the flight image, the one of the birds that, that is my favorite of the year. Um, but some of that is just the way that I feel about photos and things like that. So, um, but, you know, I, I look at it and I like it. It's really kind of crisp and, and, and clean. I, I, I do love the play of the shadows and the, the clouds, even though, you know, it's not a super um, beautiful sky. It's, there's, there, there's some depth in there. And um, this is one of the things that when we were talking about dynamic contrast that, that just, you know, I, I, I wanted so much. I really wanted to sort of be able to pull some of that detail out. And, yeah, so. so anyway, I think that's all I've got, Liz. Um, one of the oh, one of the things that um, we actually got a question about the Lightroom versus the suite. Um, you said that you sharpened one of your images in the suite. Yes. Um, and there was actually a really great question. Do you prefer sharpening in the suite over using the sharpening module in Lightroom? Um, I use the sharpening module in Lightroom as because I print from Lightroom. I use the sharpening module more when I'm printing. Um, I'm just, I'm used to the, uh, the sharpening in the suite. Um, I like the progressive sharpening actually. Um, but I mean, I do sharpen sometimes in Lightroom, but um, you know, it, it's more noise reduction there. I'll do a little bit of clarity in Lightroom, although since um, we, since Effects 8 came out, I really haven't used that much in Lightroom at all. So. Yeah, the progressive, the progressive sharpening in, in the suite is the one that I typically use. Plus, I like that if it's in perfect effects, you have the ability to add masks so that you can mm -hmm. selectively sharpen instead of having to do it as kind of one whole universal adjustment, which is really nice. Right, um, and I actually, in this image here, like the sky, I masked out the sky and did not use as much dynamic contrast <coughs> on it for that reason. You know, that's one of the things that I love about it. And, you, can, you know, you can do the... Um, you know, you can do some stuff with adjustment brushes in Lightroom, but it's just so much easier to use in the suite from, from my perspective. So, but. One of the, one of the other questions that we got a couple of times is whether, whether you ever use a tripod with the, with the Sony camera that you're using. I do actually, I do. I, I, I bought a little tripod plate for it and, um, uh, I almost put it on the, that crown point image, the one of the Columbia, I almost put the camera on that on the tripod that day, but I was just, it was cold and it was wet and I just wanted to take the shot and go. Um, I mean, just, I, I straightened it a little bit because I was a little off kilter, but yes, I do use a tripod with it. Hmm. Um, the the last thing that I think would be really nice, we had a question in there is, um, where, where do you find the glow that you're using on those pictures? So where inside you? inside Photo Suite 8, you were talking about how you use this glow on most of your images. And maybe you could show us where it is in the suite. Sure, I can do that. Let me, um, let's go. Up. So let's see here. Edit in Perfect Effects 8. I will say I'm using a beta of our upcoming 8.1 release, so hopefully it will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. That's what I'm using today. Okay. All right. Everything well, there seems we go. to be working all right. <laughs> so in the old, old, old days, in the old days of 
photo tools, um, there was an effect called charge more money glow. Uh, and uh, when we went to Perfect Effects from Photo Tools, Photo Tools was just a Photoshop plugin. And Photo Perfect Effects was sort of our first one that worked outside of, of, of Photoshop. And um, we did not include the, the Charge More Money Glow. Uh, um, I mean, there were there were a set of them: um, normal, strong subtle, and then there were muted versions of all of them. Um, we added them last year in Perfect Effects 4, and they've carried through to Perfect Effects 8. Um, now, I'm, I use these, I go to these right away just because see, I've been using these for years, and I love them, and so all you do is you just go in, you click on it, and it applies the glow. Like I said, it, it almost always is too much for me, um, and Dan will kill me, but you know, I tend to just go in and just bring the layer opacity down until it's a point where I like it. Um, Dan tells me I should be using the amount slider. Um, but anyway, the, 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 you know, some of it's just, you know, you work a certain way over a period of time and that's the way you get used to it. But in Perfect Effects 8, you know, we've got the new filter pane, right? And the, there's, you know, this great glow, fil glow filter. And, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff to play with in here. Um, you can crank up saturation, warmth. You can use different, different styles or different blending modes um, to try and pull up that glow. I mean, this this is stuff. I, I was a big fan of the Orton technique. Um, Michael Orton, who uh, pioneered this sort of dual, this slide masking, where he would take uh, a, a sharp version of an image on slide film and then a slightly defocused version and in the dark room would actually merge the two together. It, it, it's a crazy technique and his imagery is just amazing. Um, Michael Orton, um, if you don't know him, we have an Orton effect glow. Um, but anyway, uh, there are ways to do that in Photoshop but you have to do all of this layer duplication and stuff like that. Well here it's just like boom, you know, it's just it's, it's easy, it's quick, um, you know, and you just sort of play with what you want. Um, I think I've created a couple of presets um, that sort of variants on the Charge More Money Glow, but when I think an image needs glow, that's where I go. Um, there's another, another one that I like is, um, see, there's our Orton, um, which sort of give you this really sort of hazy effect. Um, I'm trying to see. This other one that I go to a lot too is the white soft glows. I honestly don't know what magic they're doing, but um, they tend to give a little bit of a glow, just enough um, when I when I don't want to overdo things. I really don't like it super super glowy. Um, I think maybe that that image of the birds in the sky. Um, I probably use the the actually the the charge more money subtle glow, and then still cranked it down probably to maybe 30 percent so that answer your question that's good that's perfect okay <laughs> all right well it's it's about 9 25 so he's actually going to pass the reins over to me and transfer okay. the screen over to mine so that i can talk to you guys a little bit about my favorite photos from this year thanks liz yeah all right let's see there we go Hopefully everybody can see my screen now. So luckily Rick just went through all of his kind of photos of the year and talked to you a little bit about his processing techniques. Um, mine are qu quite a bit different, um, which is perfect. Um, he's Rick is just in case you didn't already catch Rick is my dad. And I learned most of what I know about photography from him. So when I was, when I was a little girl, I remember him using a camera all the time. And when I started to get a little bit older, he's the one who gave me all of my first cameras, including my first film camera, which I still have and still use to this day, um, a little tiny Nikon 35 millimeter. Um, but as I've gotten a little bit older and I started taking pictures a little bit more on my own and I went off to school to go study photography, my style has, has transferred and changed quite a bit from his. But a lot of the styles that I learned came from, came from him. And one of the favorite things that I learned was about kind of the feel of the camera. Um, as he was talking about the Sony RX, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is the fact that I don't, I don't ever use a tripod. Um, if I'm shooting digital, I almost never, ever 
use a tripod. And one of the reasons why is I like the connection that I feel with the camera. And when it's on a tripod, I feel like it's stagnant. Um, if I'm shooting film, which I do on a pretty regular basis still, um, I use a I use a, a tripod because I'm usually using film that's a little bit slower. I'm using a camera that's quite a bit clunkier and harder to use. But the digital cameras, I find so much easier to just kind of hold and pick up and and shoot very quickly. So I almost never, ever shoot big, epic landscape images. I like to shoot people. Um, so I'm kind of the opposite of him in that way. He's always shot landscapes since since I was a kid, although some of my favorite fix, pictures that you've ever taken are probably of me, actually, which is really narcissistic. <laughs> well, but, you did spend a year taking a self-portrait every day, right? Yes, I did do that. I did it for almost two years, but um, one of my favorite pictures that you ever shot was one of me on the porch when I'm in my swimsuit, and it's just my feet on the yep. porch. Um but so the pictures that I wanted to show you today, um, there are two different sets. There's one that I took pretty recently. Um, I got the opportunity to go, I got the opportunity to go down to this place called Blue River, Oregon. And the reason why most of you are probably going, that doesn't sound familiar, is because it's not familiar to anyone. Um, it's in the kind of middle of a forested area. Um, in the Mackenzie Forests here in Oregon. So I brought up a little Google map so that you guys can see. This is this is what Oregon looks like. Um, right up at the top on the left is going to be Portland, which you can see, and that's where we're based. Um, all of On One Software is based here in, in Portland, Oregon. Blue River is this tiny little dot, which the only reason that it has the words Blue River underneath it is because I had to type it into Google. So um, if I hadn't typed that in, you probably wouldn't have actually seen it. Um, so I rented a small cabin in this area of Blue River here, and there are two absolutely beautiful parts about this. Number one, it's in the middle of the forest in Oregon, which is great. And number two, it's by this place called the Cougar Reservoir. Um, and the Cougar Reservoir has a long history. It's absolutely a beautiful place to go. We went in November, so it was chilly, it was foggy. Um, but at the same time, we also got these weird little bits of sun that came through. And that's pretty much what most of Oregon is like all the time. It's kind of foggy, kind of rainy, and then every once in a while we get sun and we're really happy about it. Um, and there's a, there's a hot springs at the Cougar Reservoir, and it's a lot of fun. So you get to go and you sit in these little sulfur soaking pools that are like 100 degrees, and it's just great. Um, so the first set of images I took in this small little town of Blue River, and I got to go down with my boyfriend and he and I have very crazy schedules. I work here all the time. He works for um, a hospital up here in Oregon and he does night shifts. And so he and I have a very different schedules and we don't usually get a lot of time off. So we got to go and drive down to this area and take some pictures. And these are probably some of the favorites that I've taken all year. It was in the happiest parts of this year that I can remember. And we had so much fun exploring and running around this middle of nowhere town in Oregon. Um, so this is my original image that I took. We found this small little orchard um, right outside of the town, which when I say Blue River is a town, I mean it has a gas station and a general store and <laughs> a tiny little, uh, oh, I can't remember the name. There was this little tiny restaurant and it was the only those were the only buildings in the entire town were those three um i think if you drove like 20 miles there was another town but that was pretty much it um so we took a lot of back roads and wandered around and we found this orchard and we started wandering through and it was absolutely stunningly beautiful and while we were there we got this beautiful bit of sun so i could actually start to take some images and so i wanted to take one of him and one of myself in the orchards so this was a picture that I took of him and it's through a whole bunch of the trees. It was an absolutely beautiful day. And one of the things that I've actually been trying to do more of is post-processing. So I really love the editing process. I think it's really fun. You got to see how Rick was a little, not anti-post-processing. I wouldn't say you don't no, like No, I'm not anti-post-processing at all. I'm, no. I'm just... No, no, no. Um, but he tends to do quite a bit less of it. And I love, I love post-processing. It's like one of my favorite parts about the whole, I love all the photography process, but it is one of my favorite parts. And I love sitting in front of my computer or in a dark room. And I like processing and trying to figure out how to take the essence of an image and make it look the way that I remember it in my head. 
And that has always been a struggle for me, trying to figure out how to take an idea from my brain, put it into a camera, and then put it on a computer or on a negative and try and print it out the way that I want it to be. And so I've been working really hard this year to try and get better at post-processing and try and make my images look the way that I wanted them to. So this is the original image that I shot of John in the orchard. And then this was my after image. And one of the things that I really wanted to go for was the kind of fall feel that we got while we were there. All of the leaves were bright yellow and orange. They were so much brighter in person than they were in my camera, which I was really frustrated about when I got home. And so I really wanted to kind of pull out that idea of, of warmth and fall and all of those, all of those beautiful yellows and greens and oranges, I wanted them to pop out, but I also wanted to make sure that he stood out as well. And he has that bright red jacket on, which is this old school vintage. He's a, he's a medic. Um, and that's an old school vintage medic jacket that he bought at an antique show. And I really wanted everything around him to really kind of pull you in so that you pay attention to kind of that pop that he is. Um, and so alongside that image, we set up this image of me in the orchard as well. So that's, that's me. Um, and I set everything up. I knew exactly where I was going to stand. I made a little mark in the, in the leaves, which is why you can't see my feet. Um, Cause I did a little line so that I could figure out where I wanted to be and the orchard behind me and all that kind of stuff. And I basically held the camera for him and he, I ran over, he focused and he clicked it. And then I checked <laughs> it and we did it again, like three times. So did he take the picture or did you take the picture? Technically, he's the one who pressed the button. I'm the one who <laughs> set it up. So you could say that I'm the mastermind behind the image. Gotcha. gotcha. He, was the, he, was my, he was my breathing tripod. That's, that's what I like. <laughs> Which he'd be really upset if I said that. He was so proud of himself because he took a picture on my camera. Um, and he's very, he's very, he's not very art oriented or creative oriented. He doesn't know what to do when he holds a camera. He's, he's a medic. He wants to be a doctor. And so he spends most of his time studying books and, you know, his favorite thing in the world is an old copy of Grey's Anatomy that his dad bought him. My favorite thing in the world is my camera. So we had very different ideas of what we love. And he was always very confundled whenever I would give him my camera and he'd be like, Oh God, what do you want me to do with it? So he was really excited that he got to take a picture of me um, that actually turned out. So I took this image and this was my after photo and I took it into the photo suite and I added tons and tons of different filters. One of the things that I'm a big believer in is segmenting your image down into manageable sections. So what I mean by that is I took, especially for this photo here, I took myself and I created a mask inside perfect effects and I basically added a whole set of filters on me that are separate from the filters that I added from the background. I added a lot of warmth and a lot of, I added the new sunshine filter on the background and I added a whole bunch of color enhancers, but I didn't want to do that to myself. One of the things you that happens- You love the sunshine filter, right? I do. The sunshine filter is like my favorite thing in the new perfect effects ever. <laughs> I've never had anything that I love as much as that. And I use it on probably like 90% of the photos that I bring into the suite since it was put into the beta in like October. Um, Did you do any masking on this one? Yeah. So I masked, I masked myself out. So right. it was, it was basically just separating me from that background. And then everything mm -hmm. else in the background is all connected. I didn't do any other masking except for separating the foreground and the background. Um, gotcha. And I did the same for this image as well. I separated him from the trees and the orchard so that I could mm -hmm. add separate effects to him. Because one of the biggest problems with this photo is um, when I lightened it up quite a bit, he either got blown out and the trees on the left and the right that are kind of in the way of the, the screen, they were way too bright. And so all I did was basically separate and create a mask of him so that I could lighten and edit him separately. Um, and one of the biggest things about the sunshine filter and about adding a lot of color enhancers or saturation or vibrance or whatever you're doing is a lot of times it makes skin's skin look really funky. Um, and it's, it's, you can always tell when someone oversaturates photo with person on it, it drives me crazy. Um, cause you can see that their skin is like way too pink or way too red and you know, they don't look like that in person. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't have, I don't have perfect skin. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I did a little bit of retouching on my face um, just so that I didn't look horrible. But um, 
I, I don't have insanely red skin. And when I when I added the color enhancer to the entire image, my skin looked like it was on fire. And my cheeks looked like they were just bright red, which they weren't. We were cold, but it wasn't um, it wasn't that bright. So separating the image gave me the opportunity to edit both of these parts separately so that I didn't over edit me or vice versa. Um, but these these two images are probably my favorite from the year. And I really love that they they kind of go together. Um, I think they both say a little bit about he and I and who we are and kind of how we interact together. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that they are, they really are my favorite images that I've taken this year. So. Well, I kind of think John took half of this one. So. Yeah, John did take, John did take half of that one, <laughs> but, but don't tell him that. Um, I won't tell him that. Because. I won't tell him that. He was just so excited. He was so <laughs> excited. Um but so these are these are two of the ones that were my favorites. But along with one of the things that I've been working really hard with is since I started working for the webinar program here at On One, again, I take mostly portraits and I usually take them without a tripod. I run around and I just shoot pictures when I see them. And I don't spend a lot of time thinking about a lot of settings on my camera. I use a 5D Mark III um, and I absolutely love it. It's an amazing camera. It is pretty heavy. Um, especially when you add a, a certain lens on it, it gets even heavier. Um, yeah. But it's a really easy camera to take around with me. It's bigger than obviously the Sony RX1, but I like having the ability to take pictures that um, have that much information and that much detail and that much oomph to them. Um, yeah, and changing lenses is a is an important thing. It is. I mean. And I usually um, carry I usually carry two or three lenses with me at a time. I have a little camera bag that I actually inherited from him, um, and I carry uh, the eighty five one two, which is probably my favorite lens of all time. Um, I carry a twenty four. It is a great lens. Um, I carry a twenty four to seventy, and I carry a fifty, um, a fifty one eight, I believe. So, and those are, those are the three lenses that I, I think I use probably about 95% of the time. Sometimes when I do personal art based work, I use a, a hundred millimeter macro and that's for personal projects, but I don't ever carry it with me. Um, and those to me are the ones that I like to use the most. They're portrait lenses. The 85 and the 50 are, are meant to be portrait lenses. And so, um, one of the things that I've been challenging myself to do is take more landscapes. And I, I'm not going to say that I suck at it, but if you look at images that that he's taken of landscapes and then you look at mine, there's a big difference between the two. Um, I've been shooting a lot longer than you have, though. Exactly. <laughs> I hope. I have lots of really bad landscape pictures. I just choose not to show them to anybody anymore. <laughs> yeah. I have that's, lots. Of that's bad the big landscape. secret. That to me, that was the big secret of photography was learning not to show the the bad ones. You know, okay, yeah, that one's not very good. I'll I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> that one really so. sucks. I'm just gonna yeah. gonna hide that one away. Yeah. Um, for, for landscape photography, I think, um, I've had a hard time trying to figure out how to shoot because I carry around these portrait lenses. Um, so I was using the 50 for this, I believe. And, um, it's an easy lens. It's a, it's a pancake lens. So it's really small. It's really close to the camera. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of space, so I can actually fit it in most of my really nice purses. So even if I put like the 24 to 70 on my camera, I can't fit that in my purse. But if I, if I put the 50 on my camera, I can shove it in whatever purse I have. And so that's usually what I shoot with, especially when I'm traveling like this. And we're, you know, we were running up and down the orchard, um, and weaving in between the trees. And I took over a hundred images while we were there. So it was really easy to carry around. But one of the pictures that I took while I was on this same trip was this image. And it didn't look like a lot when I took it, but I remember the day um, we had wandered away and the sun had started to go down, but we had this really amazing fog that was starting to go through a lot of the Cougar Reservoir. And it was coming down and you can kind of see it in the center of that image, but everything was really dark. Um, and it didn't, it, I remember it looking amazing. And when I brought it onto the computer, I was like, this is so not what I wanted. So I spent a lot of time post-processing this image and this was my after photo. Um, That's nice. I like and that. I think it's it's one of the best landscape images that I, I've ever taken. Um, and post-process. There was a lot of editing in this. There's probably about 10 different perfect effects layers that I used um, on this image to really make it pop out. And one of the most important was adding a customized um, 
dynamic contrast filter. So I added a dynamic contrast layer where I actually used the shadow and the highlight recovery sliders so that I could pull out all of the information on the bottom of my image. But I also added, I used almost every single slider in that dynamic contrast filter. I mean, I used the shadow and highlight recovery sliders. I used a little bit of the whites and the blacks. I used the vibrant slider and I used each one of those small, medium and large detail sliders. Um, and then I added a couple more of color enhancers in there to really make the greens pop out on the left. I used a whole bunch of warming filters to make some of those little yellow trees on the bottom right really pop out as well, because I wanted them to, I thought about changing them and making them into kind of more of a, I guess, green overlay along the bottom, but I liked how they stood out. Mm -hmm. And then I also added a whole bunch of information to add some color to the sky so it had a little bit more warmth. And I also added a little bit of information right here in the center so that I could pull out some of those faded mountains in the back. You can see that they're really dark. There isn't a lot of information in that original image. And I wanted to make them pop out of the sky a little bit more. So this is this is also one of my favorite images from 2013 because I worked really hard to actually create it. And it took me a long time to figure out how I was going to edit this because I'm just not used to working with landscapes. I work much better with people. So... Um, but that's closer to what you saw, right? Yeah, and this is a lot closer to what I remember. And yeah. that's one of the things that I'm trying to work on is recreating the idea yep. instead of just throwing a whole bunch of post-processing at it. And that's, I think, what I used to do is I would post-process and I would add all these crazy filters and then I would look at it and I didn't recognize the image. This, I recognize. I remember exactly where I was standing. I remember John was standing right next to me and we were laughing about the fact that it was about to, it was starting to rain. So we felt the, we felt the drops and we were like, we are crazy enough to be standing out here. And so we pulled up an umbrella and he hold it, held it over me so that I could take pictures so that my camera wouldn't get wet. Um, so then I, I like the fact that I can now remember all of that with an image. And I used to, I used to not be very good at that. So this is something that I'm working on in, in 2013 and hopefully continue to work on in 2014. Um, We've had a couple of people asking questions about um, more detail on what you actually did here. I know we're, that wasn't what we're trying to do today, um, but this might be a good topic for a webinar fairly soon. Um, I think you, you know, if you have that many images, it, layers in here, and we're working on stuff that might be might be worth doing. One of the one of the things that um, we just did a retouching and enhancing landscapes webinar with myself, and then we did a an enhancing landscapes webinar with Matt Kluskowski. And in both of those, we got a lot of questions about being able to see how to take an image like this. That's, I mean, this is not an exceptional photo when you look at it, um, and I, I think. If a lot of people saw this image, they would pass right by it. And I actually yeah. bracketed this photo. I had kind of a mid range, but I lost so much of the sky and I knew that I could pull out the shadow detail. Um, and so I think one of the things that I'd like to do in 2014 is a webinar where we just go start to finish on a photo like this, um, yeah. which is always good to know because this, this, this photo took me about an hour to finish, uh, maybe two. And it was just me playing around, trying to figure out what I liked, what I didn't like and so on. So it's, it's always good to know that people are interested in kind of seeing that before and after process because it does take so much it does take so much work and i think sometimes people especially me sometimes people forget about that where they're like oh this image is going to be great and then they get it on their computer and they're like wow that really stinks compared to what i thought yeah. it was going to be yep so I think you're absolutely right um the the last two images that I wanted to show you guys really quickly, and I won't talk as much about them, um, were two photos that I took of very close friends of mine, uh, more people images. And this is the original photo I took of my friend Casey, who is unfortunately in Atlanta right now and doesn't move back here until December. We miss her. Um, but I needed a whole bunch of professional headshots for my portfolio. And a lot of my friends needed them for LinkedIn profiles, uh, resumes, online websites, and so on. So I took a group of about six of my friends out to a studio that's out here at our office, and we took some headshots. And it started to pour after we got inside. And my friend, my friend Casey, she had these beautiful boots on and she loves Portland and she loves the rain. And so we were joking around about how I should go out and take some pictures of them jumping around in the rain. And before I could even think about it, Casey grabbed an umbrella and she just ran out the door. 
Um, and so my friends Nathan and Adam followed her. They threw their shoes off and they just ran out with her. And they started running around in the rain. And this is the parking lot outside of the building. So you can see the lines of the, the parking garage um, or of the parking lot there. And they just started jumping around. And so I grabbed another umbrella and I basically held an umbrella in one hand and held my camera in the other, which is really hard to do. And I got absolutely soaked because I was kneeling in the rain for a lot of these pictures. Um, so like my, all of my legs and all of my pants were just soaked. Um, and this is one of my favorite pictures that I took of this year too. Um, I love this picture. It's, it's, I think that in a lot of ways, if you knew Casey, it, it's kind of this unbridled energy that she has where she just does everything at 110% and you really don't know how she has the batteries to keep going. Um, she's like an energizer bunny. So this was our original image and this was my after photo. And I did a lot of post-processing on this image a lot. Um, and one of the reasons why is because I really wanted to intensify the shadow and that kind of line that goes straight in the center of the image. And so I also on this image did quite a bit of masking and I used quite a few different filters to get this style and get this look. Um, but she actually uses this as one of her pictures that she puts on her website now when she, um, when she talks about herself, she's a writer. And so she has a headshot that I took and then she has this picture. And I think they both kind of describe her in a very good way. So along with this photo, I also took this picture of my friend Nathan and he threw his shoes off and ran out in the rain and started smashing around in puddles. And so this was my <laughs> after image of him running around in all of the rain. Um, and when you live in Portland, that's what you have to do because it, it rains all the time. Um, yeah. So it's, it's either you embrace it or you just sit inside and be very sad all the time. So we embraced it and we took all these photos and I was actually kneeling on the ground. I was um, like chest first in the puddle and I cannot believe that I didn't get my camera soaked, but my friend Adam was holding an umbrella over me so it wouldn't get too wet um, so that at least the camera wouldn't get soaked because it was raining pretty heavily at this point. So this was one of those shots. These Both of these shots were two that I was really proud of because I was down in the dirt, in the on the grit, in the water getting soaked <laughs> so that I could get these photos of my friends splashing around in the in the rain. So that's that's great. So these are these are kind of the ones that I think talk a lot about what my year were and the people who were part of my year, which I think are probably the most important part to me, are the fact that my friends were, were part of most of these images here. Um, and I like the fact that I can remember all of these days so well because I post process them and I, I tried to make them look like what I imagined in my head and what I had on those days. So. All right. Um, <clears throat> it's about 10 minutes before the end and I'm suspecting that there are probably some questions in there because I've been talking at you guys for quite a while Someone now. Someone had asked if you had considered removing the white lines in that picture. This photo I did um, and I actually there is a, a version of this where I took the white lines out but recreating let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see there's still a little bit of chromatic aberration on this image that I didn't quite remove, um, but the texture of the rain, you can really see all of those little rain droplets. And I was using a, a, a pretty low depth of field here, which is why it blurs out pretty quickly. Um, there's a very small area here that's in focus. Um, and this texture that's right along this front white line is right where she smashed into the water. Um, and I thought about going through and I'm, I mean, I'm not going to toot my own horn. I'm pretty good in Photoshop. Um, I've done a lot of professional like retouching work and I could do this if I wanted to, but the work that would have to go into removing this white line and the rest that were behind it to create that texture so that it still looked authentic was just not worth the time for me anyways. Um, yeah. Plus the ones that were in the back started to fade away um, into that glare that was behind her dress. And so it never really bothered me enough to actually get rid of it. Um, so I did start to get rid of it on one picture and it just didn't really strike me as something that was important to remove. So I just kind of left it there. Um, and I know that that's probably not the, uh, probably not the answer that you guys wanted. Um, but I think that leaving elements like that in, I mean, it shows that we were, we were in a parking lot. We weren't, you know, running around in some absolutely beautiful area of town. We were, we were on a piece of, of tar. 
Um, and there were parked car. You can see a car behind her. It's just blurred. So I, I didn't mind that I left those elements in there. Yeah. Um, looks like there was a question about what lens I used for the splash images. I used my 24 to 70 lens and I believe I had these at F. I might have left them at f2.8, but I think I went a little bit higher. Um, let me see. I probably have the information on my original image here. Um, oh, geez. Let me jump out of the view here so that we can actually get some of the information for the image. Um, so I was at ISO 320. Oh, I was shooting with my 50 millimeter this day. Um, so this is my 50 millimeter and I was shooting at F 1.4. So I had a pretty low depth of field here, um, partially because I needed a fast shutter speed for these so that I could catch all of the water. But I also wanted to make sure that I got a nice blur in the, in the front part of the image so that I could soften the water right there. I didn't want it to be too intense when I first took this image. Um, so I needed to make sure that I had the fastest shutter speed I could possibly get. Um, which is why my my f-stop is so low so i used my 50 50 millimeter to take this uh, yeah. and i believe you love the 50 and the 85 those are your two lenses those are my two go-to's and i use them i really do use them 80 percent of the time 85 percent of the time um, yeah. and i used it for this one too and this is also a 50 millimeter picture yeah. um, which i think a lot of people don't really think that they can shoot landscapes with a 50 but you can and it's awesome um, yeah. so it's, I, I really don't think it's about the, at least for me anyways, it was never about the equipment. It was always about the, the site and always being able to <laughs> see the pictures. Cause I always had a hard time with that. Whereas like, I thought that if I used the right equipment, it would work for me. And then I used the right equipment and it just still wasn't working for me. So it was yeah. trying to figure out what I wanted as an and end some of result. it is you need to, yeah, you need to, one of the things that I like about the RX-1 is it's like it forces me to think in 35 millimeter, you know, that, that I'm not shooting with any other focal length other than 35 millimeter. Yeah. Um, someone asked if I tried the, the new Sony a7 or a7R, and actually I have, um, I've played with the a7 a bit, um, and I've ordered an a7R. Um, I'm actually selling a whole bunch of lenses um, to basically, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to move to the to the Sony platform over the next couple of years. Um, I like having a smaller, more compact camera. My camera bag will be cut in half, so. Yeah, and that's, that's at least for me anyways, that's good. I've, I've never been a big equipment person, and so for me, having more equipment weighs me down. Um, and some people love, love equipment, and they like the images where you had to go to crazy amounts of work to get them, and, and I've, I've been that person before, um, before I, I guess during I shot digital while I shot digital, um, I still shoot something called four by five, which is a four by five inch piece of film. And you can still buy it at a lot of old school film stores. Um, and it's, it's really difficult to shoot. And I started it while I was in college. And one of my best friends also does something very similar called wet plate collodion. And she still shoots with the old ether and the silver and the whole deal. Um, and when I shoot that, it's a lot more difficult. It takes a lot more time. And I like the fact that, you know, I can hear the creaking of the, the lens as I pull it out. And that to me is, is, is good yeah. work, but I don't do it all. And the that's time. too much work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to reach in my pocket and pull out a, a great camera and shoot with it. That's what I want, but that's why we're different, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm looking through the questions and actually it really does seem like a lot of people would like to have a landscape start to finish, um, uh, image Michael uh, Runian just actually left a message I think it's kind of similar to a bunch um, I come home with photos like that at time and like Liz said I tend to go right past these um, so I, I think I think we definitely will do a webinar that's designed more um, start to finish on on an image like this um, yeah you know, today's was really s supposed to be a little bit more fun and upbeat a less a little bit less about processing um, I was not trying to be an ad for Sony. Um, <laughs> more just, it was, it, I, I've been shooting a long time and I hadn't had a camera that was this much fun to shoot with as yeah. the Sony was. Um, and, you know, I, I'd be the last person to say, you know, you've got to go out and buy that camera. It just was the right camera for me. Um, I've got a bunch of friends who shoot with the Fuji uh, 100S rangefinder. Um, and that's another great camera, and it's a lot less expensive. It's not full frame, but um, the images that it takes are 
pretty amazing as well. Um, you know, and it's all how you look through the viewfinder, I think, in the end. Um, you know, finding stuff that resonates for you. Uh, so. Yeah. But I, I'm trying to see, there's a couple of sort one of, of the, housekeeping things. One of the questions that I saw in there was, I, I think it, it's from this woman named Robin. Um, and she asked, have you, have you not ruined the gloom effect of this landscape? And I actually wanted to talk about that really quickly. Um, this photo and one of the things that I've been trying to talk about is, is the fact that I don't remember it being gloomy. It was a lot brighter than it actually was. It's the fact that the camera can't pull out as much information as I want it to. And it didn't matter how much I bracketed. I couldn't get all of the information that I wanted. Um, so if you wanted to have that kind of deep, dark, gloomy effect to your image, you could edit it that way. Um, and you have the ability to do that. It's, it's the foresight of knowing what you want. And for me, I wanted something that was brighter, that had that feel of sunshine as it was coming through the clouds, because I remember it being that way. I remember the light hitting that uh, mountain there, and it was still bright in my eyes. And so I wanted to pull that out as much as possible. Um, one of the things that you could do with this image, if you want it to have that kind of gloomier style, is to make it a little bit darker, add a little bit of grunge to it, intensify the highlights that are coming in through the back, and maybe add kind of a haloing effect around the edge of the mountain, and you could really make that pop out a little bit more. So what's great about using images, especially from cameras like the ones that, that he and I have been talking about, I use that 5D Mark III, he uses the Sony, is that you have so much information in there, you can do almost anything that you want. Um, and yeah. it's totally based off of personal preference. Um, I have a lot of friends who think that these images are way over edited and they make fun of me for it because they're like, you know, it's so fall and it's just so ridiculous, but that's what I remember. And that in my mind was what I saw. I saw the bright colors. I saw the, the neon yellows and oranges of all of the leaves and I wanted to bring them out as much as possible. And I have other friends who think that this is like under edited and they're like, you know, could you add more to it? And it's like, yeah, of course I could, but this is what I saw. Right. Um, and so that's kind of what I was trying to at least put out there in the world was that you can do, you can do basically whatever you want. It completely depends on what you want the feel of your image to be. Yeah. 